Hello and welcome back to another Amber Roots devlog. There's a lot to talk about, so let's just jump right in. The main subject in this video is going to be combat in Amber Roots. Before I get into the details of the combat system though, there's a couple of things I needed to do before getting started on how combat was going to work. So let's talk about that. One thing I had to consider when putting together the combat system was how I wanted to handle the possibility of the player getting into combat without any Amberlings in their team. There are a bunch of ways to do this. For example, in Pokemon, you simply can't. You can't have no Pokemon with you, and at the beginning of the game, if you try to leave, they stop you and give you a Pokemon. I wanted to have a more flexible system while still making it clear that the player needs Amberlings to defend against corrupted Amberlings. So what I'm doing right now is, if a player gets into combat with no Amberlings, they simply get sent back to the Amber Haven. I have a respawn spot working, and so far that's all that happens. This is just using my existing functions to teleport the player around and between scenes. And I think until I can really test out combat in a proper game loop, I'm just gonna leave it as this. Of course right now it's not much of a setback, since the corrupted Amberlings are just hanging out right next to the Haven respawn. This of course wouldn't be the case in the future, it just makes for much faster testing. Now, taking a closer look at the enemies themselves, you can see that I've added some particle effects for the corruption look. This is similar to what I had done in 2D, and I'm pretty happy with this so far, but let me know what you think. Now these enemies are just standing here waiting, it just makes it much easier to test everything out, but they do a fully functioning AI just like the other Amberlings. They can wander around freely, use a waypoint system, or even chase the player around. The way combat starts, as you might expect, is by making contact with these enemies. When that happens, if the player has any Amberlings in their team, the enemies call up the combat manager, which handles all of the combat setup. There's a check in place to see if there are any nearby enemies. If there are other enemies within a radius of the triggered enemy, they get added to the enemy team at the start of combat. And that about covers everything having to do with how to initiate combat. So let's take a look at the combat itself. At first my plan was to directly import the same combat system I had in the 2D version of the game, and only tweak things that were having issues with the new project. I ended up having an idea I really wanted to try out though, so let me show you what I've put together. There's a lot to explain here, so let's take it one step at a time. The first thing that happens is the combat scene gets loaded in. As with other environment scenes, the combat scene gets loaded in additively. Also, rather than unloading the current non-combat scene, it simply gets deactivated. This is so that it can be more quickly reactivated since environment scenes tend to be much bigger than combat scenes and have longer load times. The combat UI opens up with the scene and a cinematic camera event gets triggered. I've put together these camera events that use Unity's event system so that I can easily switch between camera modes and do other things like pause player input whenever I want a cinematic camera event. Like for example at the start of combat. The camera work itself still needs a lot of polish though. This is my first time using Cinemachine for anything other than a simple first or third person player camera, so I've got a lot to learn. In the background, the combat manager is taking a look at the player and enemy teams, which are just lists of Amberlings. Then it's creating a new list of all the combatants and sorting them based on speed, the faster Amberlings getting put at the top of the list. Then the combat manager begins going through the list in order, and this is how the combat turns are handled. I'm using a list for combat turns rather than an array or a queue, because I want a really flexible system in case I want to add combatants midway through the combat in the future. I was thinking a lot about how the combat should look and feel in Amber Roots with the move to 3D, and at some point I thought it could be fun if the player could move around the player character in combat, maybe even using potions on Amberlings by walking up to them. I quickly dismissed the idea since I didn't want the player character to feel so involved in the combat, after all, the player character is more of a town founder and Amberling manager than any kind of combatant. So I thought, well what if the player could move the Amberlings around in combat? After all, there's already a system in place for the player to control their Amberlings out of combat. I really liked this idea for several reasons. The first was that controlling your Amberlings in combat directly, the combat immediately felt more alive and closer in gameplay to the rest of the game. If your Amberling is fast moving or high jumping out of combat, they are those things in combat too, so you know exactly how an Amberling will move and feel both in and out of combat. 
I like that because it made the combat feel less like a separate, very different type of gameplay. Sometimes turn-based combat can feel very divorced from the rest of the gameplay philosophy of the game, and I thought this really helped mitigate that. To go along with this, I used the interaction system for a targeting system as well. So to target another Amberling in combat, you point and use the action button just like you would if you were gathering from a tree or a stone out of combat. Again, I feel like this makes the combat feel much more tied to the rest of the gameplay, in spite of it still being a turn-based system. So when the player Amberling has their turn, the player has full control of their movement and how that turn is spent. The combat UI is pretty simple right now and far from complete. I have a panel that shows some info on the Amberling whose current turn it is, a panel showing info on who that Amberling is targeting, and the turn timer. The turn timer is a new idea and I'd like to explain it. I really wanted to make the freeform movement feel like part of the combat tactics, and if the player could just go anywhere and everywhere on the battlefield during their turn, I think the movement would feel more like a novelty and less like a part of the combat strategy. The timer is in place so that the player has to think about how to strategize their movement as well as their attacks. The main inspiration for this is tactical games like Fire Emblem. In those games, players have a grid system that determines how far they can move. In Amber Roots, I wanted to avoid the grid system though, so instead the player has a limited time to move. Combat actions will have a variety of ranges too, so an Amberling might have a fireball that can be shot from 20 meters away, or a tackle that has to be done within 1 meter of their target. So the player has to choose an action, move the Amberling within range, and perform said action. I think the timer makes this choice more interesting because, for example, the player might not have time to get within range of a tackle in a single turn, so they might choose to move closer and throw a fireball, saving the melee action for the next turn. Right now I have a set timer that ends when an action is performed. In the future, this will work a little differently though. For one, I would like the timer to continue after an action, so the player can move and perform an action anytime during their full turn in no particular order. Additionally, I thought it might be interesting to allow Amberlings with faster combat speeds to have a longer turn, to emphasize that faster Amberlings can do more in each turn. I also realized that timers like these are not necessarily everyone's cup of tea. So my current plan is to allow the player to tweak their combat timer to better fit their playstyle, making it faster or slower, and even turning it completely off. I think this is turning out really fun, but please let me know your thoughts on the timed turn-based system. I always really appreciate feedback. So I talked a little about combat actions already, and I have a lot of plans for this, but I actually only have one very simple action right now. The only thing available right now is a basic attack with a short range, since I really quickly threw together the action class just to have something to test. In the future, I'll be adding more actions based on the Amber Lynx classes, and they will come in a wide variety such as melee, ranged, heals, buffs and debuffs, etc. Since I only have one action, I also did not implement the action UI into the combat UI. In the future, you would choose from the action UI what action you want to perform on your turn. But seeing as how there's only one choice right now, the basic attack simply passes itself into the combat manager as the chosen action. The good news is that the managers in charge of the combat and actions are really flexible and will easily adjust to taking in player chosen actions in the future. So when you use the basic attack on an enemy, they take some damage and lose HP, as shown by these HP bars I threw together. When their HP reaches zero, they are KO'd and removed from combat. If all the team members from either side are KO'd, combat is over. Right now there's no real consequences for winning or losing. In order to really implement that, I need to import over the Amberling stats system, which I haven't done yet. That way experience points and levels can be accounted for. There are a couple of other things to talk about in combat. Just like how the player's Amberling has to move around to target and perform actions, I thought it would be cool to have the same thing in order to run away from combat. So during the player's turn, they can move their Amberling to the retreat area, and once they reach it, it triggers an end of combat. It's really simple, but I like this idea for now. Another thing is, combat turns can be spent in a variety of ways in this system. Because it basically functions just like being out of combat, I thought it would be fun to sprinkle things into the combat scene. So the player would be able to break down trees, open up hidden places, and even find treasure chests during combat turns. I think this will open up a ton of interactions in the future that the player could do during combat. Like flipping switches, changing up the environment, 
we're finding hidden weaknesses. I'm really excited for how flexible the system is turning out to be. And although right now I only have one combat scene, I do plan on having them be quite varied in the future with some randomization, so the player will always have something to explore and be encouraged to look around. Another thing I've been working on is getting a system up and running for a line of sight. Right now, enemies can perform an action solely based on the distance to their target. If the distance is within the range of the action, it can be performed. This isn't really the case for the player though, since the player has to aim the crosshair. This gave me the idea for trying out a line of sight system for the AI. I'm using the A-Star Pathfinding project, so moving agents around on a graph is easy enough. What I'm doing to make the line of sight work is having the agent pick a target and then pick a random point within a specified range of that target. For example, the range of an action. Once a random point is picked, a ray cast is fired from that point towards the target, with some offset in the Y direction to compensate for the agent's height. If that ray cast hits the target rather than an obstacle, then the agent has line of sight from that point, and the agent moves there. If there is no line of sight, the point is rejected and the agent looks for another point. Here you can see a sped up version of an agent randomly picking points on the graph, but only points with the line of sight to the player. In this example, the walls around the player block line of sight, so the agent is finding points in a cone in front of the player. This is working really well actually, and though I haven't fully integrated it into the combat AI yet, I think I will with a bit more polish. That pretty much sums up the combat update for right now. There's a basic system in place that's working well, and can be added to and fleshed out in the future. There are a few other things I wanted to announce outside of the game update itself. Over the last few weeks, I spent some time putting together a website for Amber Roots and Paper Mouse games. There will be a link in the description and in the channel, so make sure you go check it out. It's a good place to get a summary of what I'm striving to make Amber Roots, and it has all the relevant links to Amber Roots content like Twitter, YouTube, and the new Discord channel. Discord being the other update I wanted to mention, now you can drop by Discord and hang out, ask questions about Amber Roots, give feedback directly to me, see more frequent updates about what I'm working on, or just chat about games and hobbies. So make sure you drop in and say hi. And that's going to wrap things up for this devlog. I hope you enjoyed it, and please let me know what you think about how the combat system is coming together. I'd also really appreciate a like if you enjoyed the video, and make sure to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified whenever a new video comes out. And as always, thanks for watching.